Hello everyone, Josh Armstrong here again from U.S. Board Boats. And today we're going to talk a little bit about reciprocating saws. And I've grouped uh, two saws together here because one of them is, a, I would call it a Sawzall. It's a nice new DeWalt Sawzall. And I'm going to call it a reciprocating saw because the only thing that it does is the blade goes you know, in and out to reciprocate. So I grouped it because we don't use that very much. We use it sometimes. We don't use this very much either. It's a nice new Makita jigsaw. And this little thing also reciprocates. So I group these two together. Um, there's not that many things we do with them, but they can be really handy for specific tasks. So one of the things that we're going to do first is talk about the blades. And then we'll use them to cut a few things. This one can get a real good job on a small radius. And this one can get you into trouble when you got everything all screwed up all right. Great for refits. Also, when something's just a real mess and you gotta get it apart, this can be your friend. So moving over to blades here. So starting off with the jigsaw blade, you got two of these little blades here. And one of them I like and one of them I don't. And they're different lengths, which is really not important to me. Although I never cut anything very thick with a jigsaw, so I usually use a shorter one regardless. I don't think we need to have them any longer. There's no, no real gain to having it longer. But the reason that I don't like this one is because of the amount of threads per inch. And Actually talked to our purchasing people about getting either six to eight teeth per inch for jigsaw blades and so they got me one here that says 10 TPI which means that quite obviously I don't like it because it's too fine it's gonna have a tendency to clog bits of aluminum in there and it's not gonna cut as fast so we don't want that one we want a six to an eight sort of range and they have different sort of shapes but it also just says on this one that it's good for cutting wood, plastic, and metal. Metal to most of the world means like steel. And it won't cut steel very good either, by the way, but it's finer, we don't want that. We want this one that says wood and plastic and it says six TPI. Six teeth per inch short, we are less likely to break it and it's gonna cut faster. That's about it with jigsaw blades. And so there's a lot of different lengths of sawzall blades. And these ones are just in the little Milwaukee set that I bought. Um, <coughs> these ones are not even really as long as I like. But okay, so I, I don't like the short one so much because you can't get it in, like you wanna, you're getting in maybe in a tight spot and you're doing some damage with this thing. You wanna really get something cut. Don't like the short one. I do like this one a lot better because it's longer, but they make one that's even longer, like a 12 inch, I think this is a nine, like a, a long one and it's because we want to cut weird shapes with it. So we want a long one, there's no surprise. There's also a difference in widths. I don't like the wide ones, I like them a little bit narrower. And I, and I really, you guys probably are not gonna be surprised about this. I hate this one, and I hate it because it's got 18 teeth per inch. So it's really fine, you, know, you hardly probably see those teeth. You hardly can, you can't cut, you cannot cut aluminum with that because it's too fine. It's gonna clog up and it's just basically gonna be junk. If you get a set with some of those in them, you either throw them away or I guess one thing you could cut with that is if you had to cut a piece of steel pipe sometime or stainless pipe or bar. Or I don't know why you would wanna cut something like that with a sawzall, but you could or copper or you know, different metals, not aluminum. Not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about cutting aluminum. So we wanna have something, this is a, I can't even read that. That's a, this one says five teeth per inch. So, um, and it's nine inches long and it's fairly aggressive. So it's fairly aggressive and it's gonna cut really good. So we can go over how to put these in and they're really simple for us. Um, it used to be that you had to use tools, but these days, our jigsaw, it's got a little end on it here, and it just, you know, you just go ahead and stick it in here, and you're just gonna make sure it goes in far enough, and clicks, and make sure it's latched. 
I also make sure it's going on this little wheel here. If it jumps out of there and it's cutting like that, it's just gonna, it's gonna wreck the saw and it's not gonna, it can't cut fast with it. There. Nothing to that installation. This one, we hate that blade, so we put this blade in. Now, I've seen people put them in, and this one just has a latch on it, same thing, no tools required anymore. It used to be tools, but not anymore. People put them in different ways. You can put it in, it'll go in this way and it'll go in this way. And I suppose maybe there's a reason you want to do that, but I don't like it like that. It seems like it's backwards that way to me. I like it like this. It'll take it both ways, but this thing is designed that you can rock on that foot when you're cutting in a weird spot. And that's how I would call that properly installed. That's how I like it. Make sure that it's in there firm and we're ready to go to work. Okay, everyone, what I'm gonna do here is I got a piece of four by four fabricated angle we made in another class here. It's welded together. But what I wanna show you is how long it takes to cut it with a couple of different tools that are on the table. Now, we don't want to cut straight lines in easy places with reciprocating saws. And I'll show you why, and it's about the speed. So we're gonna time, we're gonna cut it with several different tools. And I use a piece of angle so I can get it in the vise, it's a small piece. I'm gonna hold it really tightly. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna cut it. First off, you guys have seen this grinder a lot already, but it's got a zip cut wheel in it. We're gonna cut it, we're gonna time how long that takes. Next up, we're gonna get our jigsaw and we're gonna cut it again. We're gonna time how long that takes. Then we're gonna get our a little bit more sort of cool and powerful sawzall. We're gonna cut it with that. Then last, we're gonna cut it with the skill saw, the circular saw. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna time each one. Okay, so by the way, everyone, I got some safety glasses on and I got some earplugs in and I've pre-waxed every tool. Every tool has wax on it, so it's gonna be a fair judge of how long it takes. And I'll try and see if I can't take about the same amount of time starting and stopping it. So here goes with the zip cut. might talk about is the quality of the cut. We made a bunch of sparks, wears the wheel out, and it took us 33 seconds. We're gonna move on and we're gonna try the next tool. <clears throat> Be right back with you. Okay, now we've got our jigsaw, and I wanna cut so you guys can see it, so I wanna cut from the bottom and up across this one, cut the other way so that you guys can see, otherwise I'm gonna be blocking you. So <clears throat> try and take about the same time getting started, and ready, go. Okay, minute 28. This thing is not a speed demon, folks. And it doesn't cut a really nice line. This thing is not for cutting straight lines at all. What it's for is for cutting radiuses. And we'll cut some radiuses really good for that, but it's not a speed demon. And I wanted to demonstrate that for you guys. And I guess I don't really have to stop. I'll just reset this. And then, now this time I'm gonna to cut towards me. I'm gonna cut this way towards me because that's the way I wanna do it. And I'm gonna start.
Okay, now you can see that reciprocating saw, that saw is always definitely faster. Um, it does not make a real nice cut. It's not a highly desirable finish. It's hard to keep it going straight. This thing's an animal, but it's not a speed demon. Okay, last up, we got the circular saw, which you guys know that I like. I'm gonna start the clock again, cut the saw one last time. And here we go. Now, we're talking about reciprocating saws, everyone, but what we know about them is they're not necessarily the fastest tool. If you're in an easy spot to get to with another tool, you might use another tool. You use a reciprocating certain things you're going to do with it, but you're not going to use it for everything. Okay, folks, I cut this the other day to demonstrate some things about an inside radius, and, and I'm going to demonstrate again what we're going to use, possibly use this jigsaw for. I've cut a straight line in here with my circular saw already and I extended this radius because maybe we're going to be putting a window in we need to cut it out a little bit more and we might join that with us. Now I'm going to tell you one of the things when we set this thing down here flat it jumps up and down and makes a whole lot of noise and doesn't cut all that much and it also has a tendency to scratch up the, the native material which we don't like a lot of the time. We don't want to make a mess of it. So sometimes what we're going to do, we're going to tip it a little bit this one way so that more pressure goes on the foot on the material that we're cutting off. We're less likely to do that. So we'll put tape on the bottom. This one's actually kind of nice. It's got some, I don't know what that is. Sometimes people put plastic or tape on there so they don't scratch as much. They still seem to get stuff on the bottom of them and they still scratch. So I tip it a little bit. I don't really like this thing, but sometimes we need it. So I'm going to get ready and we're going to go and do this and then we're going to be done with this tool. Alright, it's going to be loud. We've got a nice radius. That's the only thing this really is good for. Don't cut straight lines, don't cut angles or pipes or anything else. This radius is in a flat piece of plate. That's it. Okay, everybody, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a really ugly piece and we're gonna cut it apart and we're gonna use two tools. We're gonna use the circular saw and we're gonna use the sawzall. We're gonna use them together in unison. And we're gonna pan down here and look at how ugly this thing is that we got to work with. This thing, I mean, I'm talking about a disaster. This is like one of the worst things I can find around here. It's got all kinds of scabs welded all over it and it there's nothing good about this piece but we're going to demonstrate cutting in some hard spots because that's what we like that saws all for. Now one of the things I'm going to tell you is when I have to do a real dirty job like this I like to listen to a lot of heavy metal because that's what that saws all reminds me of is a little bit of ACDC or something and I've, cut, I've just marked this beam and I've marked it on two sides and marked it with square and we're going to start out by cutting that off of there we're going to cut it right off of there we're going to cut it nice and straight now I'm not going to start with the uh with the saws I'm going to start with the skill saw and the reason is because it's going to be easy for me to get that first flange and it's going to be a little bit loud but here we go we're going to make our first cut and do that. This thing is a little bit rickety. Um, usually we're working on a boat when we're using this uh, circular saw. It's usually something big and heavy. But I'm going to cut this and just take a second. But we don't have these two spots joined together and we don't want to get in here with our, with our circular saw because it's going to catch one of these flanges 
and then we make this tool dangerous if we try and get in here like that. We're going to cut ourselves, direct the tool. We're not going to do that. So this is where we get this bad boy in. It comes into play. Put just a little more wax on it. And this thing's moving around a little bit on me. I don't know if we can see. Can we see right here where we're going to join this? It's not marked, but I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and just gas across here and it's going to turn out okay. As you can see, we've made short work of this beam. It didn't take us long at all. It's cut off of there. I'm going to clean that up later with another tool if this is going to be a finished end. We cut it. We cut it in place. Okay, everybody. So now we cut a straight beam. I'm going, well, I want to get this thing apart a little bit more and I'm going to use these same two tools. Now this piece here, um, I can cut some of that with a circular saw. I'll do a little of that. But this piece here, it's hard for me to get in here because I'm getting too close to this. And I can cut out here with a circular saw, but I can't cut in here very easily. I'm going to use that sawzall again. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to cut this, 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 and this web in here. So here we are. We're going to get started. We're going to cut this thing. And this looks really ugly, and it's because it is really ugly. But we don't really care. So we're going to do the job and we're going to cut it. Okay, it's going to be loud. That was easy because we had access to it. It's not as easy here. We can't get the saw in. So we're going to take this and we're going to cut it off this way. And looks like we've knocked our blade out, bumped it on the top. But this gives us a chance to talk about something else. And that is, sometimes we might want to bend this blade, and I'm talking about bending it, okay? Like, you mean it. You make it curved like that, you're going, well, that doesn't look very good, Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, it does, because this thing doesn't care if it's bent. In fact, that's going to make it so it's not going to scratch this surface. Cut that way. We're going to say, hey, the storm strong was bright. We didn't scratch that too bad because we had a bit of a curve in there. Maybe that looks like not a bad program. Let's go ahead and cut this flange a little too. We'll have it in there the same. Now, I'm not going to hit stuff underneath because this blade's obviously bouncing. We don't want to have it hit. So swap out. We're going to do this side now too. Just the same as we just did. That curve. Now we're going to say, hey, that's not going to work for us to go that way. So we're going to change and bend this blade back. And I tell you what, we might use a blade or two, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get out of a bind because we've got something that's really messed up. So I turned it the other way and I'm going to cut it again. Do that same operation one more time. Up right around the corner, folks. I'm going to go down the Flange here now. Now, we had a real messy job to do. It was a disaster. And we got that thing cut off of there, and it was loud, it was obnoxious, and uh, that's why we're going to need to have a lot of heavy metal when we're using that tool, because that's loud and obnoxious too. So, this thing will get you out of a bind. That's what it's for. Thanks for watching.